Hey everybody, I'm Jesse. You're watching Tesla Time News, episode 136. In this episode, we're going to talk about Model 3 leasing, as well as the base Model 3, and uh, lots of other stuff, cool cars as well. Um, so be sure to stay tuned, next on Now You Know. This week's show is brought to you by, of course, our amazing, wonderful Patreon patrons who make this show possible every week. And also brought to you by the Fairfield Inn and Suites in Schaumburg, Illinois. It is the highest rated Marriott in the Schaumburg market. It is also solar powered. All right, so to start off today's show, we're talking about Tesla's blog post. Now, you may not know it, but most of the news about Tesla um, that's come out in the past few days has been about Tesla's blog post. There have been a lot of different FUD stories going on about this but basically it's just cherry-picked sentences from this one blog post um, that are then turned into an entire story. Or basically, you know, like the first paragraph is just an explanation of this cherry-picked sentence, and then uh, the rest of it is just the regular FUD story. We're going to actually go through the entire blog post. We're just going to basically skip the intro, and we're going to talk about each and every bit of it and talk through all the details so that way we are entirely informed and we can create our opinions from that. All right, so I'm going to read straight from the blog post here. This is just a couple paragraphs in. We're just skipping the intro. Let's get right into it. All Tesla vehicles now come with autopilot bundled as a standard feature for less than the prior cost of the option. For example, the Model 3 Standard Plus used to cost $37,500 plus $3,000 for the autopilot option. It now costs $39,500 with autopilot included. We think including autopilot is very important because our data strongly indicates that the chance of an accident is much lower when autopilot is enabled. Autopilot also dramatically improves the quality of the driving experience, especially in heavy traffic, as thousands of our customers frequently describe online. Basically, this does reduce the cost of the car by $1,000 if you were thinking that you were going to get autopilot to begin with. And that's kind of a big if, because for a lot of people, when you want to get the, say, standard range plus, you might be budgetarily constrained and autopilot would have been a nice luxury, um, but not necessarily something that you'd go for, right? Because it's an extra $3,000 added to the cost of the car. So I think that a lot of people knew that autopilot existed and chose not to get it because, well, they didn't want to spend an extra three grand. This kind of forces people to spend an extra $2,000 in order to get um, that version of the car. It's forcing people to move up. It's, it's really hard to know how to feel. And so this increases the price of uh, the long range cost, which is now up to 49,500 and the performance, which is now up to 59,500. All right, so moving on in the blog post. Beginning today, customers in the US will be able to lease Model 3 for a small down payment and competitive monthly payments. Customers can choose any Model 3 variant and select an annual mileage option of 10,000, 12,000 or 15,000 miles. Please note, Customers who choose leasing over owning will not have the option to purchase their car at the end of the lease, because with full autonomy coming in the future via an over-the-air software update, we plan to use those vehicles in the Tesla ride-hailing network. So, this is something that a lot of people have been waiting for. Uh, a lot of people don't like buying cars, a lot of people really like leasing cars, so now they can lease a Model 3. There's a lot of excitement behind this, but the one catch here is that you can't buy the car after your lease. The, the car kind of gets taken away and it goes into presumably what will be Tesla's autonomous taxi network. Now this is exciting. The, I mean, whether you're excited about leasing a Model 3 or you're excited about Tesla network, um, it's exciting because basically the leases are going to run out in about three years. And that means that the Tesla network must begin somewhere around or within three years, which means that full self-driving will probably be a reality within three years. So what this all means is that Uber and Lyft are in trouble because it means that basically in three years, Tesla's going to have their fully autonomous network. And not only that, but Tesla is basically going to be getting partially paid for cars. Not necessarily entirely paid for, but using a lease, that means that 
the cars will be mostly paid for. It depends really on the margins. But I mean, we're talking about a consumer who drove it for about three years, probably put somewhere on the range of 30 to 50,000 miles on it. And now it goes over to Tesla. They can go clean it and then just send it out the door. And this means presumably that, you know, they're going to have a fairly cheap fleet. So this means for any other competitor who wants to make a human operated uh, ride sharing service or any competitor who wants to make a robo uh, controlled ride sharing service is going to be in trouble because Tesla is going to have all of these lease cars, which are going to come off their leases and go straight into the network, which means that they're already mostly paid for. So, I mean, this is a brilliant move of like vertical integration that just flows together so nicely. Um, it does mean that people might not necessarily go for the leases because they were hoping to buy it at the end of the lease. But if you look at the difference between the loan and the lease payments, they're not that different. Um, the biggest difference being, of course, the, the length of time that you're paying. So, you know, for people who are like, oh, I'm gonna buy it at, at the end of the lease, they might just go for financing. Moving on in the blog post. Last quarter, we introduced two new Model 3 variants with more competitive pricing than ever, Standard and Standard Plus. Since then, Standard Plus has sold at more than six times the rate of Standard, far exceeding our expectations. Given the popularity of the Standard Plus relative to the Standard, we have made the decision to simplify our production operations to better optimize cost, minimize complexity, and streamline operations. As a result, Model 3 Standard will now be a software-limited version of the Standard Plus, and we are taking it off the online ordering menu, which just means that to get it, customers will need to call us or visit any one of the several hundred Tesla stores. Deliveries of the Model 3 Standard begin this weekend. Its range will be limited by 10%, and several features will be disabled via software, including our onboard music streaming service, navigation with live traffic visualization, and heated seats. Similar to other software-limited vehicles produced in the past, standard customers will have the option to upgrade to a standard plus at any time. Similarly, anyone who has already bought a standard plus and wants to convert to a standard is welcome to do so and we will provide a refund for the difference in cost. To further simplify our lineup, beginning today, customers will need to call or visit a Tesla store to get Model 3 Long Range Rear Wheel Drive. We're making these changes to ensure that our online ordering process is focused exclusively on the three Model 3 variants customers want most. The base Model 3, obviously people had been ordering them, but they found, and I'm not too surprised by this, that a lot of people opted for the standard range plus. It wasn't that much more, and you got 20 more miles of range and a lot nicer features in the interior of the car. And I think that people who have been waiting this long have been saving up this long and went, geesh, I've been waiting this long. I should just get the standard range. Plus, I'll get it before everyone who gets the standard range. I've been waiting this long. And so I think that this kind of skews the results a little bit here. So when Tesla says that the standard range plus has been outselling the standard range by more than six times, well, but the standard range plus was available and the standard range wasn't. So people may have been waiting to, say, see the interior of the Model 3 standard, which we've never seen before. We've seen one picture. It is this picture. And that's it. You don't get to see the back seats. You don't get to see hardly anything else. There's no other angles. That was the only thing we get to know. So that may have led to people saying, I don't know if I want to order that car. There's no real way to know. So Tesla seeing basically this discrepancy between the standard range plus and the standard range, this is basically why they said they made a uh, software limited standard range plus as the standard range, which is confusing. Like, let's just call it like the middle half range or the, the, the bigger small range. I don't know, let's call it something else. But so now for people who wanna buy the base model, they have to, go on the phone or go to a store. It's a pain, it's a, it's a bit more complicated. And so making it on the phone or at a store um, gives Tesla a chance to upsell whoever's interested in buying the base model. You know, you're saying, oh, well, you can get the standard model or you can get the standard range plus. It comes with all these features and you might cave in and be like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll get the standard range plus. But they've made it harder-ish to order, right? Now you have to call or go to a store. It doesn't stop people who can't afford it, 
but it probably does stop people who aren't informed about this, right? I mean, by not having it on your website, um, essentially when people go to tesla.com, they're expecting to see all of their options. So by not having it, it's kind of like a, huh, well, I guess I'll go for the standard range plus, which is probably what they're hoping. However, you know, it's sort of this balance between like, but why not just put it on your website? Um, you know, and by giving people the option to just order on the website, you're, you know, there's an incentive pattern here. I'm not sure if it's fully well understood by Tesla. So that was more or less the entire blog post. I read it almost word for word, but it's not quite as bad as all the Fudsters seem to make it out to be. The Model 3 does exist. You, you can order it. Um, you just have to call or go to a store. So all the headlines that say, you know, Tesla removes standard range Model 3 from website, uh, it's, that's clickbait. You know, that's not true. And some stories go in to tell how customers can purchase one, but others don't. It's pretty scary FUD. We've seen FUD for years now. I, I think it's not a big surprise. It is annoying that they just can cherry pick each different little thing. But that's not to say that Tesla is doing everything perfectly. I mean, I think that they should offer the base model on the website. Um, and I think that they probably should have just stuck to making a base model. Um, I think that it's excellent. It's really smart for them to offer this base model, which is just a standard range plus software limited. It's kind of annoying to have software limited uh, seat heaters, but at some point, maybe you just bite the bullet and you say, all right, you know, I've been saving up for a couple months, years or whatever, and uh, I finally want to upgrade to a slightly longer range and, you know, seat heaters. <laughs> you know, it, it's not the it's not the worst thing that could have happened. I mean, now the standard range is going to be better than it was going to be before. So, the, you know, there's that. It's going to have the sort of premium-ish interior. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty big win for everybody, but it's not what we were expecting, and it just opens up the door for FUD. But, you know, don't give in to the FUD. It, this does not mean that the base Model 3 is dead. It does not mean that Tesla is in financial ruin. It's just simply a new way of doing things, and Tesla is always doing this. All right, so now we're gonna go over to Zach, who's in the Netherlands. Hey, Jesse. While I was in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, I booked a trip to go fishing. That's right, fishing, but not for fish. I was aboard one of Plastic Whale's fleets of boats that travel the canals of Amsterdam and clean up the waste floating there. Plastic Whale is the first professional plastic fishing company in the world. We met up with our captain, Eric, who taught us how to fish and separate what we caught into trash, plastic, and bottles. The bottles, being PET, are the most valuable for what Plastic Whale is doing because in addition to cleaning up the waterways and protecting birds and marine life from plastics, the bottles are transformed into beautiful office furniture. Companies buy this furniture, which not only helps fund Plastic Whale, but also helps attract companies to do team building where they go out on the canals and clean up waste. You might be asking, how effective can this be? Well, to date, Plastic Whale has had over 23,000 fishermen, collected over 200,000 bottles, 3,800 bags of waste, and built 11 boats out of plastic. That's right, they build their boats out of the very plastic they pull out of the canals. And if that weren't enough, the boats are 100% electric. Captain Eric told me that they run on a 24 volt battery system and can run nine hours before getting charged overnight back at their home dock. Plastic Whale's mission is to go out of business. And I'm kind of torn. Yes, I'd like all waste to be gone from the canals and waterways of Amsterdam, but on the other hand, I had such an amazing experience. I kind of want them to stick around. If you live in Europe, or you're planning a trip to Europe, plan a trip to Amsterdam or Rotterdam and join Plastic Whale. You can book trips through their website, or Airbnb for about $30 per person for a two-hour fishing expedition. And unlike other fishing trips where you may come back empty-handed, I can promise you, you will come back with a full haul. We had about eight bags of waste and plastic that we fished out of the canal. You'll feel really good, you'll work up an appetite for lunch, may I suggest the vegan junk food bar, and you will feel a true sense of camaraderie with all your fellow fishermen. All right, so Geely, has just unveiled 
Geometry. No, I'm not talking about the math. Geometry is an all new electric car brand. So you may have heard of Geely. They own a, a lot of a lot of different uh, manufacturers, <laughs> um, including like Volvo. And they also are a Chinese car company. And they've just, again, unveiled their new and again, they've just unveiled their new brand, Geometry, which is going to be their all-electric brand. Um, they plan to launch 10 pure electric vehicle models in multiple segments, including sedans, SUVs, crossovers, and MPVs by 2025. Their first vehicle that they unveiled with within this un unveiling, it's like an unveilception, was the Geometry A which was an all-electric sedan. It comes with a standard and a long-range battery pack. The standard range has 51.9 kilowatt hours, and the long range has 61.9 kilowatt hours. And the standard has a 410 kilometer range, that's 225 miles, and the long range has 500 kilometers, which is 311 miles. Wow, but that's using the NEDC standard, which is not close. In fact, it, it stands for not even damn close, which it doesn't stand for, but is true. I mean, compared to the actual ranges of what people expect, um, we're looking at probably 300 kilometers, which is about 186 miles for the base range, and 400 kilometers or 250 miles for the long range. The starting price is going to be $37,200 American. That's before Chinese incentives. The Geometry A is going to be sold in China to start with, but it might also be headed overseas to Europe and perhaps even to America. This is great news. Another electric car on the market. I... I'm sad to see them using NEDC standards on their marketing. It's basically the least accurate um, standard ever. Like it's it's worse than WLTP or EPA. EPA is the closest. EPA you can pretty much use as like a range. WLTP is a little rosy. Um, and NEDC is like, pff, if you're traveling downhill with a back wind, you know what I'm saying? All right, so I'm going to shoot it back over to Zach. He's talking about a metal 3d printed bridge good morning jesse zach here in amsterdam amsterdam based startup mx3d has built a full-scale steel bridge so what's the big deal you might ask this bridge has been 3d printed check this out a robot arm with a 3d print head keeps adding steel to the bridge until it is one solid piece of steel able to withhold the weight of people. Not only is this bridge amazing because it was built using 3D technology, but it means that soon bridges can be built in place. Just set up a robot on each side of the river, canal, harbor, or overpass that you want to traverse, and the robots will build you a bridge out of practically thin air. Oh, and another thing, this is a smart bridge. A team of mathematicians from the Alan Turing Institute IoT specialists and engineers that have teamed up with MX3D will deploy a smart sensor network to monitor the bridge's health. These sensors will collect structural measurements such as strain, displacement, and vibration, and will measure environmental factors such as air quality and temperature, enabling engineers to measure the bridge's health in real time and monitor how it changes over its lifespan. This data will also allow them to teach the bridge to understand what is happening on it. This data from the sensors will be input into a digital twin of the bridge, which is a living computer model that will reflect the physical bridge with growing accuracy in real time as the data comes in. The performance and behavior of the physical bridge can be tested against its digital twin, which will provide valuable insights to inform designs for future 3D printed metallic structures and ensure that it's safe for pedestrians under all conditions. Now, I reached out to MX3D and found out that the bridge has already been tested and will reside on the Arctoburg Wall crossing the Stufsteg Canal located in the red light district of Amsterdam as soon as the renovation of that canal is completed. So the next time you visit Amsterdam and go for a walk, you may find yourself walking on a 3D printed metal bridge. Back to you, Jesse. So I think Elon Musk might be the only CEO who can create an entire news story out of just one tweet. So Galley over at Hyperchange uh, sent this to Elon on Twitter. He said, average Uber ride costs two dollars per mile today cars live for roughly 150,000 miles robo taxis could charge one dollar a mile and generate hundred and fifty thousand dollars in revenue over their lifetime 
transportation as a service flips gross margin structure of vehicles from 20% to 50% plus. And Elon responded by saying, Model 3 drive unit and body is designed like a commercial truck for a million mile life. Current battery modules should last 300,000 to 500,000 miles, 1,500 cycles. Replacing modules, not pack, will only cost $5,000 to $7,000. So let's first talk about what Galley is talking about. Um, he's saying that basically instead of a, a regular Uber where a guy drives up to your house, if it was a robot car that which drove up to your house, um, they could charge less because they don't have to pay that driver. And so for every robo taxi that was out there, it could be earning roughly $150,000 in its lifetime. But then what Elon says is that the Model 3 is not going to have a 150,000 mile lifetime. It's going to have a million mile lifetime, which roughly translates using Galley's math into a million dollar lifetime. So if you release a fleet of Model 3s out onto the road, each one of them throughout its lifetime would earn a million dollars in revenue according to Elon. Also, potentially, there could be uh, battery module replacements, uh, according to Elon. Now, it's not clear as to whether the normal consumer is going to have access to battery module replacements. It seems like they might be. And five to $7,000 for 300,000 to 500,000 miles to get another 300,000 to 500,000 miles is a pretty good deal. You're ex essentially extending the life of your car for not very much. You're, you're doubling the life of your car for less than the cost of your car, which is not usually how cars work. And it means that, that the Teslas that we're buying today are built like commercial trucks and are going to last a million miles. And we were talking earlier how the Tesla network was going to put Uber out of business, this is another nail in the coffin for Uber and for Lyft. Because basically $150,000 in revenue per car does not translate into profit because you have to buy the car, you have to pay for gas, you have to pay for maintenance um, over the life of 150,000 miles. With Tesla, you have to pay for electricity, which is cheaper. It lasts way longer, so you get way more revenue out of one car, so you don't have to buy as many cars. This means that you're gaining profits as well as putting the other car company out of business because you can charge less per fare. Crazy. Crazy. I mean, as soon as this robo taxi thing kicks off, it's going to be insane. Even if you kept people in the cars, it would be insane. The Model 3 would still be better. And now back over to Zach in Europe. Hey, Jesse. Zach here in France. Now, I didn't make it into Paris, but on our way to London, we stopped in Lyon in central France. So this footage you're seeing is from there, but this story is about Paris. So Paris has a fleet of 4,700 metro buses. Paris's transport operator, RATP, currently has some 950 hybrid powered buses, 140 biofuel buses, and 83 electric buses in its fleet, and a goal to only purchase electric buses starting in 2025. But get this, because the Summer Olympics are coming to Paris in 2024, the city wants to start cleaning up its air pollution, so they have signed deals to purchase $450 million worth, or about 800 new electric buses. The plan is to have 150 new electric buses on the roads between the end of 2020 and 2022. Paris will be buying from three electric bus suppliers equally, Hules Bus, Bolor, and Alstom. Paris Mayor Anne Hidalgo has made tackling smog a priority. Paris wants to phase out diesel cars by 2024, and Paris already has the goal of only allowing electric cars in the city by 2030. So if you live in Paris and start seeing these electric buses appear, please send us photos and video and consider shooting a video contributor story for TTN. So with all this excitement about leases and standard range and everything going on, easy to miss, but in Europe, the standard range plus is now available to order, and this includes China as well. So China can now order standard range plus Model 3s. This is in addition to the long range all wheel drive and performance versions which were previously available. So this means that these are going to be the cheapest Teslas ever to be available in Europe, costing roughly 44,375 US dollars in Norway, which I have a feeling is going to uh, be buying a lot more Model 3s. And now back to Zach in Europe about a story from Switzerland. Hey Jesse, Zach here reporting from 
Cervinia, which is a small town in Italy, right over the border from Switzerland. And this story is about Switzerland. We drove uh, through Switzerland on our way here, and we passed a lot of Teslas, including a lot of Model 3s. And that's what this story is about. The big news is that the Model 3 has outsold all other cars in Switzerland in March. That includes ICE cars as well. So Tesla delivered 1,094 Model 3s in March in Switzerland. They beat out the Skoda Octavia with 801, and they outsold the VW Golf with 546. So if you take a look here at this chart, Tesla sold more in the beginning three months of 2019 than they did in all of 2018. Pretty amazing stats. All right, reporting to you from Italy, Back to you, Jess. And now, just because I'm lazy, back to Zach in Europe. Hey, Jesse. Zach here in the UK. We just got out of the Euro Tunnel, and we are really excited to be in the UK. I'm standing here at the Maidstone Supercharger, um, and I wanted to tell you about a little story. It's something that might help some of our viewers who are in the UK or thinking of traveling to the UK. The City of London, for the past couple of years, has been letting people know that there is the ULES, which is the Ultra Low Emissions Zone. That is in London, and that is where you can only drive if you have a level four motorcycle, um, level five van, or level six car. And uh, if you're in the Eurozone, you'll know what that means. Um, but basically, it means you have to have a very low emissions car. Now, if you drive a Tesla, you might be thinking, great, I can just drive in there anytime I want. No, you have to first register your car. So like we just drove in from Sweden in a Model 3, but we can't just drive into London without registering first, because if we do that, then what will happen is our license plate will have its picture taken, um, and they will check the database to see if we're registered as a low emissions car. They won't find us if we're not registered, and so we'll get issued a 10 pound fine. And if we don't pay that fine, I think it goes up even higher and then they send that to you and it's a whole mess. So what you should do is to go online when you go to the UK. It's free to sign up. You go to the uh, ultra low emissions uh, zone website in the UK government's webpage. You sign up, it's for free. You don't have to put any sticker on the car or anything like that. And what will happen is you'll then be in the database and you'll be good to go. Um, the reason they're doing this is that Mayor Sadiq Khan wants to clean up the city's awful, awful pollution. And they've already seen a reduction in nitrous oxide since they've announced that it's going to happen because so many people have already started to not drive in there. In fact, 11,000 cars a day less are driving in that zone because they don't, I guess they don't want to have to deal with it. So this has already gone into effect last week and I'm going to go visit there and see if there's any difference. All right. So back to you, Jesse. All right. It is now time for the lightning round. Here we go. So Altus Motors, which is a startup electric pickup truck manufacturer, has built their prototype platform dubbed the XP. The XP is the next step on the way to a fully functioning, full-sized prototype pickup truck. Altus had tested a fast charging prototype battery pack last year that fully charged in under 15 minutes, a larger version of which is used in the XP. Definitely need to build a truck on top of the chassis, but the chassis is arguably the most important part of the truck, so more than 50% of the way there to a prototype. Very excited to see it. Every car manufacturer, it seems, always releases dark pictures of the car before they unveil them. And uh, I, I don't know if this is a car thing. I don't know if this is a new thing. And sometimes it's really cool. And sometimes it just looks like a car. Of course, I'm talking about Volkswagen's ID hatchback. In case you didn't believe me, here is the side view of the ID hatchback. There's not much point in unveiling a car like this if it's pretty obvious what it's going to look like. We know what it looks like. It's, it's a car shape, right? It looks like a car, I guess. This particular car based on this platform, should have a range up to 550 kilometers or 340 miles. But of course, this is using the WLTP standard, um, which means that the true range will be somewhere around 300 miles EPA. The base will have the price of a modern Golf diesel or roughly somewhere around $30,000. So we don't exactly know what the base model range is going to be, um, but it'll if it does truly cost roughly $30,000, this is going to be an awesome car. I'm excited about it. So I think, uh, you know, this, this could have used an unveiling sort of thing in a dark room because you would not have been able to guess what it is of course, I'm talking about this Tesla motorhome. It basically is what it looks like. Um, it's going to have a range of 200 miles. Look, motorhomes, electric motorhomes with, with solar panels and everything, those are exciting to me. I think 
a lot of people are going to embrace that lifestyle. All right, it's time now for the video contributor story. For those of you who might want to do a video contributor story, we are still very, very short on video contributor stories. But luckily this week we have one. It's from Nissan and Maytan's Model 3 at the new Urban Supercharger location in Columbus, Ohio. These are the neighbors we told you about who bought a Model 3 together and they share it. Hey guys, here we are at the Goodale Street parking lot in central Columbus. This is a game changer. There's a supercharger right in the middle of the city right on the short north with all the galleries next to Goodale Park and you're in the Arena District and the North Market is one block away. Yeah, it's a brand new uh, urban Tesla charger and it's really easy to get into. The highway is right behind us. A few blocks of driving, actually no blocks of driving and you're right here inside the parking lot. You don't have to go through the gates, you just park, charge, you have a station to get a ticket. If you ever want to come talk Tesla, uh, come to Miami Valley Pottery. <laughs> and, uh, We'd love to give you a charge. You. Visit us at Miami Valley Pottery. Here's Emil and Elise saying hi. How do you hi. rate this supercharger? How do you guys rate this supercharger? Uh, I give it an 8 out of 10. All right, now you know. All right, it is time now for the Patreon bonus stories. For those of you who do not know what the Patreon bonus stories are, they are special stories that only the Patreons get to know. To become a Patreon patron costs a buck a month, and you get four of these Patreon bonus stories a month. And so that's, uh, you know, four Patreon bonus stories per month for a dollar. So that's a quarter. And there are multiple stories in each Patreon bonus stories. It's like five cents a story pretty darn cheap. So, and you're also helping to support the show. I'm going to head over there now and do it. It's a Patreon bonus story. All right, I'm back from the Patreon bonus stories and we have some Patreon patrons to thank in the Patreon shoutouts. Platypus Rebellion, Dennis Banfield, Marcel Singer, Chris Mater, David Hancock, Christopher Diaz, Ryan Brunson, Brian K. Susan Dickey, Patrick Holliday, James Sewell, John L. White, James McLean, John Oakman, Janik Wieke, Ashen Hugo, Frederick Van Wauve, Marcel Singer, Nicole Danielle, and Tobias Peeger. Thank you so much to all of our Patreon patrons who support this show and make it possible every week. All right, it's time for Elon's Tweets of the Week. And this week, Elon had some amazing pictures of the Falcon Heavy launch. So for those of you unaware, the Falcon Heavy launched last week, and all three boosters landed successfully. And also the fairings landed in the ocean, but were apparently undamaged and will be used on the next Falcon Heavy launch. All right, it's time for Community Mail Time. Community Mail Time. We have Ari at the Boyertown Antique Car Museum. Ari told us about their recent Tesla meetup at the museum and said, Chevy not only killed the electric car once, but twice, maybe even more. The Milburn Electric Car Company factory was bought by GM in 1923, and then they closed it. Also, we have Jean-Marie, who just got his Model 3. And man, those European license plates are so cool. I wish I could get a mustache front license plate. And we have Frederick, who just got his Model 3. He said... Here I am while waiting for some CCS charging. The Model 3 is without a doubt the best car I have ever had. And Christopher also got a new Model 3. He says, hello guys. I am very happy to send you the pictures of my Model 3 delivery this week in Hamburg, Germany. Until a few years ago, I could not imagine buying a new car. I could not imagine buying an American car. I could not imagine buying an American car because of its superior technology. And... I could not even imagine that the previous sentence can be free of sarcasm. And now, I never wanted any car so bad like this one. Wow, that is pretty cool. All right, it's now time for On Air. This is where one of our Discord members, who is one of our patrons, um, gets to ask us a question every week, and we get to answer the question live on air. Um, so this week we have Quincy. Yeah, my question for this week is... Uh... Why is no one relating the drop in sales of S and X to the cut of the base versions of those models at the beginning of Q1? That's a really good point. We've been hearing a lot of FUD saying like, 
oh, the drop in sales of S and X. And no one has brought up the fact that they got rid of the base models of them. And, and the base models were the cheapest. And so it would make sense that the majority of those sales would be of base models. In the end, I suppose it, numbers matter, right? In terms of sales and, and revenue and profit and, and all that. But it, it does seem funny that no one acknowledges that. And they just are like, the demand is dropping in, in, in most publications. Like there's not a lot of talk about like, there is probably uh, another, you know, a refresh coming for these cars and everyone's anticipating it. And I, I would have to think too that the profit margin on the highest end model S and X is a lot higher than the lowest. I, I mean, I think this is an excellent question. Going forward, when we see hopefully a a refresh of the model S and X, um, in the and the the sales shoot up like are they going to be equally as surprised it'll definitely be interesting to see whatever those refreshes might look like anyway thank you so much for the question quincy all right sounds good thanks for having me on and it's now time for supercharger reviews this is where any of you can go out into the world find a supercharger and review it as jason reporting in from the canmore alberta supercharger small four-stall charger in the back of a hotel. Not really any amenities around. Nothing really within walking distance. But who can complain when you have a view like this? Early morning sunrise. Beautiful, beautiful Rocky Mountain town. Hi, this is Magnus Mortberg from Kungel, Sweden. I'm here at the new 16-stall uh, supercharger. Uh, it was built uh, last summer and uh, it's not many cars here so it's good space for all the new Model 3s. Uh, in the background there you have the Viking, uh, let's see where it is, it's there, the Viking grill and you have a beautiful view of uh, the old Kungälv fort up on the mountain. So now you know. Supercharger station for Tesla. There's 10 superchargers back here. Uh, we're actually in Riverview, Florida, just outside of Tampa. Uh, this is Big Bend Road and 301. Uh, not too far from I-75 too, so it's convenient for uh, most drivers. And uh, in the closet you'll find um, we have a Winn-Dixie here. Uh, there's a Panera Bread in the corner. Uh, there's other Popeyes restaurant here. So there's plenty to do, shop, to eat to do while you're waiting for your Tesla to be charged. So just wanted to share with you one of the newest ones here in the um, Riverview, Florida area. Thanks. All right, that's it. Thank you guys. Bye. Wow, that was fantastic. I'm, I'm so glad you guys are out there reviewing these superchargers. We have these all on a website with a map. So you can, if you're planning a trip or you just want to know how the supercharger around you is, you can go there, you can see, you know, people's reviews of it and just remember everyone shoot the videos in landscape that's kind of how youtube works all right it's time for new superchargers and this week luckily i have a break after last week's you know 14 15 32 i don't even know how many superchargers there were last week this week we just have one um and it is number 1510 in the world and 630 in the u.s is the 12 stall urban supercharger in the Bronx at the Bay Plaza in New York. All right, it's time now for Be Free. For those of you who don't know what that is, that is businesses for rewarding Elon employees. So basically any business can go on our website and sign up and this allows Elon employees to get discounts just for working for Tesla, SpaceX, or Boring Company. This week, Poster Envy. For those of you who are unaware, Poster Envy is a company that Zach and I actually run. And, uh, you know, we make pretty fun, cool posters that you, you can buy. And so for Elon employees, we're giving away two free posters. Um, they just have to pay for shipping and handling of the posters. Um, you just visit www.posterenvy.com and enter your valid email address at the top left from either tesla.com, spacex.com, or boringcompany.com, and we will email you a promo code. It's the Patreon Giveaway. All right, it is now time for the Patreon giveaway. And the winner this week gets to choose anything from EcoWare. EcoWare, of course, is a sustainable t-shirt company. And the winner this week is Barry Shero. 
Congratulations, Barry. You will get your pick of whatever you would like on EcoWare, and we will ship it to you. All right, and we've made it to the end of the show. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, me. Another week all by myself. I'm so sorry for everyone who has to watch me for this. I'm so tired. Oh, uh, I went to the... Uh, I went to the Rivian event uh, last night. Um, we left the Rivian event at 11 o'clock at night, and we got home at around 4 in the morning. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> um, hopefully, you're going to watch uh, in depth tomorrow. So hopefully, it wasn't all for nothing. Um, hopefully, you know, uh, we gained a, a new perspective into Rivian. And, you know, thank you so much for watching this show. Thank you so much for watching to the end um, to just, you know, be able to be here to, to talk to. I know that I'm only talking to like 10% of the people who usually watch the show because I have I have analytics. Um, if you are watching now, try to watch all of the shows until the end. I know that it's quite a time commitment, but like maybe if you're like done halfway through, just skip to the end so you can watch the end plate. I just want to give another special thank you to everyone. Um, we just hit 100,000 subscribers today, which is really exciting to wake up at 11 o'clock in the morning and, and uh, you know, finally hit that 100,000 mark. I think this means we get a check mark next to our YouTube name, which could be exciting. I don't know if we want to do that or not. We're going to hopefully get a play button in like six weeks or something. So we're going to have to clear out a space somewhere behind us. Yeah, I, I just want to thank everyone for, uh, you know, being part of this awesome community. We, again, we have discord um which you can join it's a patreon perk for three dollars or more it, it's just wonderful to have so many people with so many different backgrounds from so many different places all communicating in the same place um all talking about the same sorts of things you know it's it's all organized according to you know we're talking about solar and electric cars and um you know different different projects that people are working on it's it's really great i'm just so glad that we have that um to be able to just reach out to people um and you know also on air of course um but, you know we have lots of fun parts you know? we have uh we have this nice beautiful mug all right i'm gonna go sleep now i'm i'm exhausted thank you so much for watching now you know <laughs>